पीपल आर एक्टिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ कंट्रोलिंग अ पर्टिकुलर एंटिटी यू के नॉट डीवीएट फ्रॉम द पाथ एट एनी गिवन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दैट द बोथ द पार्टीज हैव अ कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअल अग्रीमेंट स्टेटिंग दैट एटलीस्ट टू ऑफ द पार्टीज मस्ट हैव अ कंट्रोल इन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड ट्रिपल वन शैल बी अप्लाइड टू ऑल द एंटिटीज दैट आर अ पार्टी टू जॉइंट अरेंजमेंट Good morning and welcome to the session 3 in unit 5 in IFRS where we are going to speak about the joint agreements now that is going to be represented by the indian accounting standard 111 let's go further and try to see that a joint agreement is an arrangement of which two or more parties have a joint control now let's try to first understand that word joint arrangement is an arrangement in which two or more parties have a joint control so two people are acting in terms of controlling a particular entity so that's going to be a very very important statement two people are controlling an particular entity an arrangement can be a joint arrangement even though not all the parties have a joint control of the arrangement now look at this factor an arrangement can be a joint arrangement it can be even though not all parties have joint control over it which means to say that apparently on the paper it can be still written as joint arrangement even though the other parties or the concerned parties is not having one person is still controlling it so what we are trying to make here is that the arrangement factor that is i am not getting theoretically into the management control but i'm getting more from the perspectives of the accounting standard so that's why i say at least two of all the parties must have the joint control now assuming for a while that there are five or six people who have joined hands together in terms of controlling an entity here now in that scenario in that case i would like to say that no at least two of the parties must have a control there the other one person other four persons might not have that's not a problem but as per the accounting standard we make it very very evident and clear here stating that at least two of the parties must have a control now why is this meaning here what is the factor that we need to understand is that moment it comes to a joint control a joint practice all together that means both the people should show equal concern on the organization they should at least have that controlling factor that where is the management working on what are the financial standards we are maintaining so somewhere the equality in terms of reporting the equality in terms of working together the equality in terms of reporting that particular function that particular entity has to come in so that is why i go in for this joint arrangement now the second thing is the what is the objective the objective of as triple 1 that is indian accounting standard let me just write it down here indian accounting standard triple 1 is to establish the principles of financial reporting by the entities that have an interest in arrangements that are controlled jointly so only for the joint agreement we are going to bring in this particular perspective called as the indian accounting standards triple 1 now why is this indian accounting standard coming here for joint arrangement is because there are many companies in india which are jointly managed or there might be a parental control there might be a control where subsidiary versus parent so there might be different factors different forms all together in terms of controlling the organization so in that case in that scenario i would always say it is better to establish this particular joint arrangement so that is why 
we are having the Indian Accounting Standard Triple One, which will try to establish the principles of financial reporting clearly followed by the scope of this particular standard. The scope of the Indian Accounting Standard Triple One shall be applied to all the entities that are a party to joint arrangement. If I am a party to joint arrangement, now let me just put this word to you all together. Why? Because when I use this word joint arrangement, that means I am actually getting into again a control factor. So one entity here let's say one entity and the other factor here one more entity both of them there is a control factor that is going to be established so on the control basis how is that they are jointly controlled what are the factors what are the reporting standard only with regards to that only with reference to that particular standard we are going to use this accounting standard so that is why this is very very important this will not be applied to a single organization or a single entity at any point now the next thing that we are going to see here is the characteristics of the joint arrangement now what is the characteristics the parties are bound by a contractual agreement second thing the contractual agreement gives two or more of the parties to have a joint control now moment we talk about partnership moment we talk about the word joint arrangement or we say about collaboration joint venture these kinds of name are quite familiar to us from a management perspective no doubt about it the reason is that we have heard about it theoretically in the business standards but when it comes to the accounting standards the first thing that you need to understand is that the both the parties have a contractual agreement so they both have signed a contract contractual agreement stating that yes we will be getting into an agreement we will be getting into a standard where the standard has to be maintained so there are terms and conditions which will be mentioned on the document stating clearly why are we getting into a JV into a joint agreement joint venture altogether second thing is that the contractual agreement and there might be cases where again I want to tell you you might have three or more five or more people also who are jointly engaged in the form of doing a business but then the joint arrangement factor tells very clearly that at least two people out of the five out of the six or out of the three should have a control on the arrangement factor so two people should act upon the arrangement they should be there physically presence morally controlling the organization telling what needs to be done at any given point of instance why they have to form this so that is where as I have told you the control factors comes into picture now one thing which I want to mention here as we are talking about the word called as control in accounting standards the most important thing that has to ring in the mind finance is always about control factor rather than just the expansion factor the any other walk of management when you talk about a HR or marketing or sales or operation these are all factors of management which can be looked apart in different methods in a flexible manner I'm not saying that in an unethical manner but then they can be a little bit flexible but when it comes to the financial accounting standards you cannot deviate from the path at any given point of time so that is why I would say Say that the parties who are into the contractual agreement here two or more persons who are involved in that they need to come in they need to understand on what basis this is going on and they need to build up that setup all together so that's why it is very very important in terms of the contractual agreement that has been talked about so uh, this is why the characteristics are so well defined in the Indian accounting standard triple one now meaning of joint control what exactly is that sharing of the control in an arrangement which exists only when decisions about relevant activities require unanimous control of the particular activity of the particular business 
Now, if I, if I like to take a typical example from the construction field, from the real estate sector altogether. Now, let us take a company like l &T. Now, l &T might have a controlling stake with somebody else in an organization where they have decided to build an IT tech park or build a, you know, a mall or a, a particular complete entity, a construction, a bridge or a highway altogether. Now, in that scenario, l and and the controlling partner, the other people who have joined into the NTT, will have a concern over the business activity. They need to be unanimously accepting this factor that what has happened, how it has happened, and where we need to address the issue altogether. Why I am bringing this into picture is that, suppose both the organizations are trying to frame particular business activity then both the companies should understand, should agree to the terms and should believe on this factor that yes, we are ready to do this particular activity and are we on the same page, the mutual consent which I am trying to talk about here. Why? Because sometimes what happens is that the parent company, the other company might take things for granted and they might have gone forward in terms of executing that particular business. But then the other side of the organization, the other controlling entity can come forward and raise a question tomorrow saying that, sir, we did not agree for this contract, so we might not be liable for the financial outcome or the financial activity that is happening. So at any given point of time, in a joint agreement, in a jointly engaged activity, both of them in most of the business concern, they need to have a unanimous decision that has to be approved, then only they can start working. Following the type of joint agreement, an entity shall determine the type of agreement in which they are involved. It might be either joint operation or a joint venture. Now there might be sometimes, let me just clarify again when I come back to the construction. When I say that as a joint venture altogether, in a joint venture, I might not be working. I have just signed a joint venture saying that I will get 30% of the land. The builder might get 70% of the factor there. In a joint operation, we both have agreed to work under certain terms and conditions. In a joint operation, we have said very, very clearly that we will have to decide upon the rights and obligations of the arrangement. So we have a right in terms of performing the function, in terms of telling the people how it needs to be done, where it needs to be done, what are all the factors that are involved and all those things that we have to guide up. So that is why I would say that this is actually a matter of understanding through the agreement. The agreement agreement has to be very very clearly mentioned specified saying that what is the obligation what are the rights under which we are talking are we just doing this operation just because we have signed it or are we trying to fulfill each and every obligation that is being mentioned there unless and until each and every point is being covered we will not be able to measure the economic activity the next thing is that financial statements of the parties to the joint arrangement classified as joint venture a joint venture share recognizes interest in joint venture as an investment so I'm only interested in investment I have invested my land with that particular company so that in return I'm going to get a qualified asset or I'm going to get a particular value for that altogether so in that sense it is in accordance with the Indian accounting standard 28 which talks about the investment in associates and joint ventures and this entity will be exempted by applying the equity method as specified because this standard might go into the Indian accounting standard 28 and not specified to this so in this case we will apply this particular standard 28 and they will get exempted away from the Indian accounting standard triple one the next thing is the separate financial statements that we are talking about the separate financial statements are joint operator joint venture shall account for its interest as it's given in the paragraph 7 of this accounting standard and a joint venture in accordance to paragraph 10 of accounting standard 27 which will tell about the separate financial statement so you will be getting a complete standard here where they will be able to tell you how the things are
are moving, what are all the factors, in what uh, statement, in what stand we have formed this financial statement, how we are working, all those terms and conditions shall be written here up to the mark. So we need to understand that in the separate financial statements, we are trying to guide, we are trying to tell the people what exactly has happened, how it has happened and what are the joint related operations that which we are involved into. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that this session was of a great value and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be talking more about the accounting standards which are coming in in terms of having a greater impact in the modern corporate world. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.